Okay, uh, let me minimize this. Okay, so today uh, we'll start up with the advanced global uh, intercompany system. So I'll just give you an overview of what is global intercompany system, why we are going for AGIS and the setups, and then we'll go get into the data entry. Okay, so let me just create a sheet for running notes for uh, running notes AGIS. <coughs> okay. So in 11A, we have got uh, something called Global Intercompany System, GIS. And in R12, now it's called AGIS, Advanced Global Intercompany System, because some of the uh, features were uh, enhanced in uh, R12. And uh, most of the screens in R12 are now, like uh, as far as the AGIS is concerned, most of the screen in R12 are uh, web-based. That is your HTML pages. But whereas in, in 11A, all the GIS forms are uh, forms-based uh, uh, screens. Okay, so before we get into this uh, advanced global intercompany system, so first you need to understand the concept of intercompany transactions and intracompany transactions. So what is intercompany? What is intracompany? Okay, so let me let me close up this and let me open our uh, Reliance uh, group structure. Okay, so intercompany will start up with the uh, intercompany transaction as the name itself says a transaction between two different legal entities or more than two different legal entities are called intercompany transactions. So take an example a transaction between 01 and 04 that is Reliance Communications and Reliance Telecom mm -hmm. or a transaction between 04 and 03 that is within the ledger or across the ledgers. So if, if there is any transition between Reliance Telecom and Reliance Oil and Gas, that is called an intercompany transition. If there is any transition between Reliance Communications and Reliance Telecom or Reliance Communications and Reliance Software, even that is also called an intercompany transition. It's a transaction between two different legal entities and those two legal entities can be within one ledger or it can be across the ledger. They can, even, they can be even located in different uh, ledgers. So in what are the scenarios wherein you create your intercompany transactions so take this particular example between uh, 04 and 03 reliance telecom and reliance oil and gas so reliance telecom can very well provide some telecom services to oil and gas and similarly reliance oil and gas can provide some uh, what do you call your um, oil and gas related services to uh, telecom so these two are between are separate legal entities so in the eyes of law they are two different kind of a companies even though all, uh, all these two companies mean, even though these two companies are forming under reliance group but from a law perspective these two are kind of a separate legal entity so if there are any separate legal entities so law treats that these two are kind of any other two companies so it could be something like these two companies needs to be treated as a transaction between say reliance and say tata reliance and uh, uh, whatever some other company okay so that means any kind of transaction which is entered between these two companies should be uh, in in accounting terms uh, there is a term called arms length transaction or uh, arms length price so whenever any transaction is entered between these two companies okay they should not take an advantage of the law and then uh, kind of like <coughs> charge a low price or uh, or do some kind of other uh, adjustment so it's like it's like Reliance is dealing with some other company. So if it is doing with, if it is with some other company, then whatever the kind of a transaction which system is going to create, uh, the, the Reliance is going to create in the system, they need to actually pass the same kind of transaction, whether it is dealing with the Reliance oil and gas or with the other uh, external system. <coughs> okay, so that is called intercompany transaction. Now coming to the intra-company transaction. So intra-company transaction is a transaction between the legal entities sorry between the company codes within a single legal entity so we do not have that particular scenario but take an example we got one more company code of say uh, 07 here which is assigned under release telecom then a transaction between 04 and 07 is called intra company transaction that is a transaction between the company codes within a legal entity or say 03 and say 010 Zero 05 and say zero 011 and from a gl perspective there is also one more definition for the intra company transaction from a gl perspective apart from this uh, the first definition that is a transaction between the company codes of a legal entity 
a transaction between the company codes assigned at the ledger level even that is also called as an intra company transaction which you have already discussed when i was talking about the gl module okay now out of these two definitions of inter company and intra company so from an ags perspective we will be talking only we will be talking only from the first aspect which is the inter company transaction a transaction between the different legal entities so any questions on this uh, inter company definition it is very important that you need to understand this definition before we proceed further with this ags module arvin what is the difference between a multi currency related uh, multi currency transactions and the uh, inter company transaction okay what do you mean by multi currency i mean okay so i think you are talking about um, multiple reporting currency something like that so there is nothing called yeah. multi currency so yeah every ledger has got something called functional currency so take an example usd functional currency is usd uh, for the cad ledger functional currency is cad and for inr ledger uh, the functional currency is inr okay so one definition of what you are saying is multi currency is like a company should be a, or in a particular ledger you should be able to enter a transaction in any currency other than the functional currency that is you should be able to use the multiple currencies so that is also called as a foreign currency transaction okay and uh, the definition of this multiple reporting currency mrc is basically nothing but a reporting currency okay so when we are talking about the translation i was explaining you i mean i explained you about that reporting currency concept if you want to convert the transactions of this particular ledger into any other currency you need to assign something called reporting currency in the ledger or you run just or just run the translation process when you run translation process automatically reporting currency gets created and assigned to that particular ledger so in this example so taking a usd i want to convert their balances into inr because it needs to report it to the uh, reliance group in inr terms so what you need to do is you need to run a translation process in uh, reliance usd ledger when you run a translation process automatically reporting currency get created and that will be assigned to your ledger so that is a reporting currency did i answer your question narender mm -hmm. uh, i think i i think i will understand more what exactly is the difference if i uh, go through the ags part i think correct okay um, but like uh, remember like ags has got nothing to do with the currency ags is only in ags we are just talking about the transaction between different legal entities it could be in same currency functional currency and it could be different currency so you can enter a uh, intercompany transactions in the functional currency or foreign currency so take an example if you are entering an intercompany transaction between this and this you may be either entering in inr or you, you may be entering in usd if there is any transaction between these two generally you will be entering in usd you will not be entering in another currency but from a system perspective when you are creating an intercompany transaction there is a field called currency so you can choose any currency there okay <clears throat> okay so now uh, for all the modules uh, we were uh, we have taken the reliance inr ledger as an example so i thought like uh, from uh, for this particular egas and eb tax we'll take usd ledger as an example okay so under reliance usd ledger now we got two legal entities so let us assume that uh, reliance telecom is actually providing some services some telecom services to reliance oil and gas so when it is providing some telecom services okay then obviously it needs to send a kind of invoice copy to reliance oil and gas and it needs to receive money from oil and gas okay so this is the company which is providing the services to reliance oil and gas and reliance oil and gas is the company which is receiving the services okay so company which is providing the services is called initiator a company which is receiving the services is called recipient so these are the two terms which are used in agis okay initiator is the company which is providing the services and uh, reliance oil and gas is the company which is receiving the services okay so taking this i mean uh, taking this into background so now can you tell me under reliance telecom it is sending the or like it is selling its services or it is selling its goods to reliance oil and gas okay then reliance telecom is going to create an ar invoice or ap invoice ap invoice no reliance telecom is selling the services it is selling the services and it needs to receive the money oh, 
yeah yeah okay okay in that example so, so yeah, here yeah, reliance telecom needs to create an ar invoice okay and reliance oil and gas is actually receiving the services so whether it be ap invoice or ar invoice ap invoice AP. it is ap invoice because it is receiving the services and it needs to pay money for that okay so using agis in the agis screen once you enter the particular transaction system will automatically create of course there are a couple of other steps so system will automatically create an ar invoice in reliance telecom and ap invoice in reliance oil and gas so if you are not using agis module you need to manually go to the uh, reliance telecom create an ar invoice again you need to log into reliance oil and gas uh, uh, ap responsibility and create an ap invoice so there could be a scenarios wherein like uh, uh, these two be, these two be, uh, being a two different legal entities so you need to actually coordinate with the people who are working under these companies so reliance telecom needs to create an ar invoice send that particular copy to reliance oil and gas reliance oil and gas needs to receive that particular invoice copy and it needs to create an ap invoice so sometimes there could be scenarios wherein that ar invoice is created but ap invoice is not created it missed out something like that so those kind of trans those kind of transactions create something called unbalanced intercompany transaction so you are creating an ar invoice but not an ap invoice so in order to avoid all this manual effort oracle has come up with something called advanced global intercompany system and the once you create that agis transactions in agis model and once it is approved we will also see the approval functionality today and once it is approved system will automatically take care of creating this ar invoice as well as the ap invoice so that you will not have any unbalanced intercompany transactions okay so the first step in agis is apart from creating of the responsibility the first step is you need to create these legal entities as the intercompany transaction so if you remember ap AR or the subledgers modules uh, stores the data at the operating unit level. Okay, or that or or in other words, you use terms called operating units in uh, subledgers. In GL, you use the term ledger. In fixed assets, you use the term corporate book or tax book. Similarly, in AGS, we use the term intercompany. So the transactions or the reports are based on the intercompany organization. Okay. So the first step is apart from creating of the responsibility, you need to create those legal entities which you want to use AGI in AGS as the intercompany organizations. Okay. Okay. Now we'll proceed with the setups. Okay. Uh, Arvin, quick question. This AGS is only enabled for the single particular uh, business group. Mm -hmm. Correct. See, as per the org structure, it really under Reliance Group, you can do some intercompany transactions. Or, or if I understand it correctly, uh, that is the only uh, option. Or can I do for a different business group also? Uh, I, I see. Again, that particular question is not just from the AGS perspective. I think you can create a multiple uh, business groups in Oracle. Am I right? So you can create a multiple business group, and then you need to assign a profile option called HR business group. Okay to to specify to which business group that particular uh, responsibility belongs to but i never tried i think it should be possible to create an intercompany transactions across business group i never tried that because like in most of the models okay. even in inventory also whenever you are moving the goods from one inventory or to inventory or there are some couple of challenges when you are if you want to move it from one inventory or to another inventory or which which is located in another business group similarly there could be some challenges but i think it should be possible but i never never tried that Okay. Okay. And and one more thing, Arvind. Uh, you talked about intra uh, intra company transactions in AJS, right? Mm -hmm. So that is again uh, uh, derived based on the uh, company codes you defined at the ledger level in uh, accounting setup, right? In GL. Yeah. But that is what is going to yeah, access in AJS also, right? yeah yeah that's true and uh, but uh, from an ajs perspective generally we use ajs module only to create intercompany transaction but just from a concept concept perspective i had explained you the intra company if it's an intra company transaction okay. then you do not even come to ajs you directly pass a general entry directly in gl okay if it is between company codes as 04 and 010 go to the gl okay under reliance usd ledger you can just try directly pass a general entry between 04 and 010 under the single screen okay but yeah, uh, you are you are right. These company codes are actually derived from the company codes which are associated to the legal entity in the GL ledger definition. 
so when you are doing a data okay. entry automatically these values are defaulted or like rather when you do a uh, you say under by selecting a reliance telecom as the uh, company code uh, sorry as the uh, intercompany organization uh, if i try to select a company code of say 0 10 or like maybe say 0 3 or 0 2 okay it will throw an error message that this particular company code does not belong to this particular legal entity something like that okay okay and one more question right i mean when you are doing these setups right uh, uh, i believe uh, to create the ap invoice and the ar invoices and uh, there is a seeded workflows underlying in that uh, flow correct so uh, by chance uh, is there any uh, setup screen or something which we can see uh, where we will be setting up those uh, uh, workflow names okay so as far as uh, this particular tra training instance is concerned everything is seeded okay what i did is i just ensured that the corresponding ap and ar uh, operating units are already set uh, if you remember like we have set up only this particular operating unit from an when i'm talking about ap and i set up only this particular operating unit from an ar perspective okay but now when i'm creating a, a intercompany transactions here and when it is going to ap and ar i need to have the corresponding ap and ar modules are also set up so I had created the AP and AR. So I did again all the setup your financial options, payable options, responsibilities, profile options, all the stuff. Okay, that's it. And then go to the AJS module, create a transaction, and click on submit button and run a program which will push the data from AJS to subledgers. You need not do any other setups. Everything is seeded in the system. Even the workflows, everything is already seeded in the system. You need not check anything. Only thing is there is something called uh, 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 I need to remember exactly. I think. JM, JMS agent listener. I mean, uh, that's a practical uh, example I can give from my current client, like uh, uh, the JMS agent workflow listener. That is the uh, what you call a workflow name, okay? Which needs to be up and running. So whenever you create an AGS transaction, if when you click on submit button, if it doesn't go for an approval, okay? That means JMS agent workflow listener is down. So generally what I do is I just send an email to my uh, DBA, can you please check that JMS agent workflow listener workflow is up or uh, 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 down? If it is down, he'll take care of uh, bringing bringing that particular workflow up and running. That's it. Okay. Okay. Because what I noticed is there is definitely there are, um, as per my understanding of this AJS flow, right? There is a, a workflow underlined to move the transactions from AJS uh, transaction to respective AP or AR module. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I spent some time in one of the situation, uh, mm -hmm. but I am unable to figure out like uh, which part of uh, configuration we are actually invoking this workflow. Because there is a need of a customizing that workflow. To, no, no, that's what I'm to okay. Okay. Maybe okay. I'll give an example from my current client where I implemented uh, this AGIS. Okay, I have ensured that throughout my setups, I just completed the AGIS setups, and uh, I have ensured that AGI. Uh, uh, during our UAT or like sorry, I think SIT when we were actually testing uh, when I click on submit button it is not going for an approval and it is not moving forward so when I check in the meta link it says that JMS agent workflow listener needs to be up and running that's it that is the only step which I did I did not do any other step uh -huh. okay. so that is the only step which you need to ensure that that is up and running yeah in uh, yeah it could be but uh, what in our scenario is in our client one of the client uh, we want to uh, because the information what i understand from ags is uh, the transaction number whatever you key in it would be same across both ap or ar am i correct yes exactly yes yeah so uh, but in our in our situation we want to tweak the names and also add some additional dffs when it is going to ap uh, and another set of uh, DFF in it in it is uh, importing to AR. That that kind of an, an enhancement is required only by touching that workflow. Uh, uh, so uh, I was I was wondering. It was already developed the code, but I was wondering in which part of AGS configuration I can see this workflow configured configured so that. I can okay. easily go through the uh -huh. name and the process what is underlying in okay. that workflow. Anyway, it may be out of topic. You can proceed. Okay. okay. I mean, just guys, like for other person, right? If you know, you just throw that where you find that uh, name. Okay, but just to add if to that, just to, just to add to that, that once the AGIS uh, transaction is approved in uh, AGIS, you need to run a program called 
transfer transactions to air, uh, receivables so that particular program will create an AR invoice and once that is completed you need to run a program called transfer transactions to payables so transfer transactions to payables is the program which is pushing the data from AGAS to AP so obviously I don't think so there is any other workflow behind the scenes but just this particular program so this particular program is checking if the corresponding AGS transaction is approved and whether it is sent to air only once it is sent to air it is pulling the particular transaction and send and pushing it to AP so as far as I know there is no workflow it's only these programs which are actually pushing the data from AGS to APR AR so obviously you need to check your logic in this particular standard program yeah that program is actually re retaining the open interface tables uh, Arvind. Yeah, that's yes, my yes. understanding because that workflow is actually populating those uh, interface tables either it is ap or ar and these programs when you schedule or kick started right in the concurrent request level mm -hmm. and it will look for only those intercompany entries in that open interface and it will create accordingly but my understanding is there is definitely a workflow. Uh, okay, I don't want to extend it all, yeah. but I just want to throw it to Pradeep, another person. Uh, if you people are aware, like uh, any any further uh, indicator where we can see those uh, uh, workflow names would be appreciated. Okay, and uh, when I'm explaining these uh, topics now, I'll also uh, what do you call explain you a couple of customizations whatever we have done. So maybe somewhere maybe that could be useful for you niranjan okay okay, okay no problem yeah uh being back to the setups okay the first thing is we need to create the responsibility So I have created a responsibility by name AGIS Intercompany Super User Reliance. Okay, let me just go to the responsibility definition. So I just copied the menu and request group of the standard responsibility and the naming convention which I've used uh, uh, It's a similar naming convention whatever you use for the other model like payable super user uh, Reliance and the operating unit name. So here AGI is intercompany super user Reliance and I did not use that any kind of operating unit or uh, what you call uh, a Currency the reason being the way in AGIs in general uh, it works is you will you need not have separate Responsibility for each operating unit or a ledger or something like that you will have only one responsibility and there is one setup called AGI security setup. I'll, I'll explain you that in a while. So based on the particular uh, security setup, you will automatically have an access to only those intercompany organization for which an uh, access is provided to you. So take an example. In this case, if I give you if if I give an access of Reliance Telecom and Reliance Oil and Gas to say Arvind user ID, then when I'm proving a data entry, I should be able to select only these two intercompany OX. I will not be able to select the other intercompany OX. So uh, that is the reason why we will have only just one responsibility uh, for AGIS and uh, the same responsibility will be given to say Niranjan. Okay, and for Niranjan, I'll provide a AGI security uh, access of only this particular company. And say for Narendra, I'll provide an access of all these five companies. Okay. So, but the name of the responsibility will be same. The same responsibility will be will be will be given to all the users. But depending on their AGI security access, they'll be able to do data entry only for those intercompany OX. So, I'll be able to do a intercompany data entry of these two OX. Niranjan will be able to do any data entry of this OX, whereas Narendra will be able to do data entry of all the five OX. But the responsibility will be the same response. So that's the uh, first responsibility creation and second thing is assigning of this particular responsibility to your user ID and next thing is profile option. Okay, so what I did is uh, taking an example like wherein I am and uh, I have an access to enter intercompany transaction for these two uh, 
uh, intercompany OX. Okay. And once uh, these two, uh, the uh, AJS transaction is approved, then I'll be running some particular program which should push the data to AR as well as AP. As I said, the system is going to create the corresponding AR and AP invoice. Okay. I'll be running that particular program from the AGS intercompany supervisor. Okay. So generally, if you give MO operating unit, okay, profile option of this particular company, okay, then I'll be pushing the data only for this particular uh, uh, intercompany org. If if I if I have an access of uh, Reliance or like a MO operating unit profile option has got a value of Reliance oil and gas, then only this particular invoice uh, get created or I can, I'll be able to push only to here, but not to this company. So, but in our current case, the objective is once I complete your intercompany transaction, which involves these two company codes, I should be able to create AR invoice and as well as AP invoice. So that means my AGIS intercompany super user should have access to more than one operating unit okay remember like uh, why we are we, i'm getting into the operating unit so from an data entry perspective within agis from an agis security perspective i need to have an access to these two companies which is fine but when i am creating once the transactions is created in agis and once it when i run, uh, once i run a program to push the data to ar and ap where the data is stored at an operating unit level i should also have access to the two operating units so that's where your mo security profile will come into picture so i will not assign any mo operating unit okay for this ags intercompany supervisor reliance but i will create a mo security profile which ideally includes all the operating units but in the current example as i'll get i'll uh, create intercompany transaction only for these two companies or these two legal entities i created one mo security profile which includes the corresponding operating units of these particular two legal entities so i created a mo security profile by going to this us hrms screen so us hrms security profile that's the navigation that's the responsibility so you need to create a security profile so this is the way you need to create a security profile you give a name to your security profile and just leave all other uh, as the default values you need to select something called security type secure organization by organization hierarchy and then give the two two operating units which you want to fall under reliance ust security profile and then give that particular reliance ust security uh, profile whatever you have created to this particular mo security profile value so agis intercompany reliance mo security profile so reliance ust is the security profile so the, before you proceed with assigning of this particular profile option this is fine okay this is not uh, inr okay reliance ust uh, is the reliance ust ledger is the ledger because these two falls under reliance ust ledger and uh, before you proceed with assigning of this mo security profile you need to create this mo security profile and uh, security profile under us hrms uh, manager and once the security profile is created it's a standard functionality that once your security profile is created you need to run this particular program security list maintenance program then only your security profile will take effect so run this particular uh, security list program once these two are the security list maintenance and once these two are done assign that particular profile option to your responsibility okay as far as the mo security profile is concerned i am able to group multiple operating units so in this example if it's an intercompany transition between this and this i create i group those two operating units under that particular reliance ust um, security profile and assign that particular security profile to your responsibility had it been a scenario wherein like i want to have one responsibility to enter intercompany transaction across all the ledgers then what you need to do you need to create one security profile so in that case the naming condition will not be reliance usd it will be something like say reliance all uh, reliance global you can use any word and then you need to associate all the operating units reliance postpaid reliance prepaid reliance cotton extraction reliance cloth manufacturing reliance telecom reliance oil and gas and reliance software okay okay that is fine with regard to mo security profile now with regard to gl data access set in this example i had assigned it gl data access of reliance ust ledger because from my training perspective i'll be now entering an intercompany transition only for these two okay what if if i want to enter an intercompany transition between this and this and these two are falling under different ledgers 
if that is the case how can i assign a gl data access set which will have access to multiple ledgers what is the solution gl ledger set exactly gl ledger set so you need to create a ledger set uh, maybe it could be release all ledgers or something like that within that particular ledger set associate all the corresponding your uh, ledgers and assign the particular ledger uh, set to your profile option gl data access set profile option so if you click on the drop down for the gl data access set see that i have not created okay but here in this list of values if you have created any ledger set you should be able to select the particular ledger set so this particular drop down is showing both ledgers as well as the ledger sets okay <coughs> so that's the first step arvind quick question this ledger set primarily it is uh, restricted to use in the agis or it is uh, it is accessible or having a impact or kind of usage in uh, gl also no it can be used across uh, it can be used not only in uh, uh, agis it can be used in gl okay in gl if you want to have one particular responsibility through which you want to have an access to data of inr ledger usd ledger and uh, canada ledger you should create one particular ledger set if you remember we have already created that particular uh, ledger set i'll show you see gl general ledger supervisor reliance overseas so if you remember i created one particular ledger set okay and for that particular ledger set i have given an access of usd ledger as well as the canada ledger okay and now if i go to this that's the reason why i given a naming convention reliance overseas so all the overseas ledgers other than inr ledger go to journals enter i am able to see canada ledger and usd ledger both okay okay, okay. so that is in gl and within even in the sub ledgers also take an example uh, so in i'll give an example of our current client okay in our current client we have got uh, close to 40 operating units which falls under 25 ledgers okay couple of ledgers has got more than one operating unit so we have created a responsibility by name ap supervisor global similarly ar supervisor global okay for those responsibilities we have assigned gl data access set of we have created one particular uh, ledger set which is called uh, uh, some abc okay our client client name okay so abc uh, ledger set and that particular ledger set has gotten access to all the 25 ledgers so under the particular ledger set definition we have included the 25 ledgers similarly we have created one mo security profile which is say abc global and under the uh, uh, security profile we have included all the 40 operating units and for that particular ap supervisor global gl data access set is abc global which is my ledger set similarly mo security profile is uh, abc global which is my um, it, it's an abc global security profile something like that that's the name and that is my mo security profile so ledger set can be used not only in ags it can be used across all other modules you can use in uh, uh, gl you can use in ap you can use in ar okay 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 Arun. Yes, uh, somebody is trying to ask a question. Narendra or uh, Pradeep? Okay. Nothing, Arun, nothing from okay. 